Hmm. Hello, Alex. Hey. <laughs> the turn up problem, or at least part of the problem, Friday, is that uh, if you use the Zoom app on your uh, computer, it has an instant meeting button, and the instant meeting does not use the regular code that's been assigned to you. It's like a private meeting that no one knows about except the people you send the new code to, so. Oh, I see. So you were waiting and I was waiting and somewhere along the way, Gwen was waiting. <laughs> Although I didn't get the notification that Gwen was waiting until I think it was in the afternoon or late morning. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. Hmm. No one else has joined? Not yet. Um, we'll see if we'll see we'll just see I guess uh, but that's fine I'll do it for one person <laughs> two percent yep there you go <coughs> excuse me haven't talked all weekend now and I start talking start oh. coughing all right well when i say i haven't talked i haven't talked more than like what three words in a sentence probably at a time <laughs> all right so we got up as far as we got through electrons last week and yeah. we looked at um we we're starting to look at the nucleus and uh, Rutherford discovered it, thought it was just protons. Chadwick discovered neutrons. And now it gets weird. So it's made of protons and neutrons. Together, protons and neutrons are called, as you can see, get my pen where this, there it is. As you can see, they're collectively called nucleons, which uh, I kind of like the wharf style Klingon better, but so I guess I do like the nucleons. Mm. Yes, and you can be shaking your head and smacking your forehead now. Yeah. There we go. So this sounds a little bit weird at first, but it really isn't. Uh, if you think about it for just a second, the number of protons, Z stands for the number of protons in whatever element we're talking about. Every element has its own Z number. The number of protons is the same as the atomic number. This is except for the Z part, that should be reviewed from chemistry. The number of neutrons can be different from an atom of an element to another. So as, um, as you see in the example, and this is a common example, we talked about it in biology, we talked about it in chemistry. Two common forms of carbon are carbon 12, carbon 14, where 12 is the mass number uh, and A down here stands for the mass number. So the neutrons plus protons is the mass, uh, mass number. This is the same for all elements in a, um, no. That is the same for all atoms of an element. 
this varies. Um, when I say varies, there may only be a couple variations, uh, but there is a variety. Now, if you look at some things like um, uranium, I think it is uranium. I'm not sure. And I don't have a periodic table in front of me. When you look at some of the larger atoms, elements, you may see, uh, well, before I get to that, I'm kind of skipping around here. That's why the atomic masses are decimals, um, usually. So um, oxygen is 15.9994, if I remember right. Almost 16, but not quite because most oxygens, apparently the overwhelming majority of oxygens are eight protons and eight neutrons, but apparently there's a few oxygens out there with eight protons and seven neutrons or whatever. So it averages to some decimal number. Now, when you look at a few of the larger radioactive elements uh, at the bottom of the table, they will not be a decimal. Uh, and that is because they are giving you um, um, not the average of the whole element, but they're only giving you the most stable isotope. So, yep, we've got all these different isotopes, all of these different forms of, of an element with different numbers of neutrons. Seems like there was something else I was going to put in there. If I remember it, I'll put it in. Now, nucleons are held together. And when I say held together here, I mean in the nucleus. Um, by the strong force. So Protons, oh, I know what I was gonna tell you. So for example, hydrogen. Most hydrogen is H1. Um, one. one proton, no neutrons. There is a form of nitrogen, uh, hydrogen that I understand is naturally occurring that is H2, one proton, one neutron. And I guess that's quite uncommon, but I guess it does occur in nature. And it's my understanding that there, uh, this is called deuterium. It's my understanding that there is a um, form of hydrogen made in radiac um, nuclear reactors or something called tritium, which is one proton and two neutrons. So there's different forms of the different elements. All right, so nucleons are held together in the nucleus by the strong force. So um, helium is pretty simple, two protons, two neutrons. Uh, no matter how you stack them, no matter how you visualize them as being arranged, unless you do them in a straight line, which um, nuclei tend to go into uh, tend to go into sphere-ish structures for the same reason that water droplets tend to break into spheres. If you take a hose and spray it out, it may come out of the end of the hose as um, a solid stream, but by the time it's at least if you're tilting it up so it's in the air for a while, by the time it gets to the ground, it'll come down in droplets. There's kind of a surface tension kind of thing going on there. And the same thing happens with the nucleus. Nuclei, they tend to be in more or less spheres. So if you take a hydrogen atom, two protons, and two neutrons, uh, there's a finite number of ways you can visualize those happening. And unless you did it like this, with the neutrons in the middle, which it's gonna to tend to go into a sphere, so this isn't gonna happen. Somehow you've got two protons next to each other. So you've got two positive charges sitting next to each other, not B 
being repelled and like charges repel. So that was one of the mysteries of the nucleus. How can you have all of those positive charges in there pushing in on each other and they still, well, hello, Conrad. Uh, you've got all of these positive charges repelling each other and they still stay together in the nucleus. And the reason is because of this strong force. So why is it called a strong force? <laughs> because it is amazingly strong. It is about 100 times stronger than the electrostatic repulsion force, which would be what is trying to push the protons away from each other. Notice that it acts equally. Oh, and there's Gwen. Hello, Gwen. Um, it acts equally between all nucle nucleons, whether they're neutrons or po protons. Now, <coughs> notice this. This strong force acts only over a range of one to two femtometers, then drops off quickly. Uh, so femtometer, um, femtometer is a Fermi, also called one times 10 to the minus 15th meters. Uh, and you know, I guess that's so what? A nucleon, a proton or a neutron is one to two Fermis or femtometers in diameter. So this basically, the strong force, basically only acts over the distance about equivalent to a diameter of a, now, of a nucleon. Now, all right, so I didn't get those perfect, although eh, they're not too bad in size. So if, <laughs> at this distance, if we were to remove the center one, these two would be attracted to each other. However, come on. So if these were any farther apart, the electrostatic repulsion of two positives would uh, push them apart and the nucleus would blow up. If on the other hand, they were any closer together than one diameter, one nucleon diameter, they would be attracted strongly to each other and they would continue to be attracted until they were um, in contact with each other. And it doesn't move very fast, it was just the arrow key. So it's, um, acts over a range of one to two femtometers and drops off quickly. A nucleon is about one to two femtometers in diameter. Now, uh, a phenomenon similar to surface tension holds an atom's nucleus in a more or less ball shaped while allowing the nucleons to migrate within the nucleus. Notice, the protons and neutrons do not stay in one place, any given proton or neutron. Not I suppose that that makes any difference to us because a proton is a proton as far as we can tell, if we can even see them specifically at all. A neutron is a neutron. But the nucleus is fluid. They can move around. Uh, any questions about this? And if you're using a cell phone, there is a raise hand button, and I think you have to swipe up from the bottom maybe. And if you're 
using a uh, laptop. I haven't found that raise hand thing on the laptop yet. On the laptop, it's under the participants tab. Okay. I don't think I, so I don't know that I have the participants tab. All right. All right. Um, thank you. So radioactivity, now we're talking about natural radioactivity. There's actually a lot of different kinds of radioactivity. Oh, what? Dugan? Nope. Hmm. Don't know what that tone meant. I don't know if you, I guess you didn't hear it because I don't have it set to share computer sounds. All right, so um, we're talking uh, natural radioactivity. So I don't know, it's been a while now, 10, 10 years maybe, give or take, and the tsunami that hit Japan and wiped out the Fukushima reactor. Uh, it didn't really wipe it out. It flooded one of them, knocked all the power out. So there was no circulating pumps to keep the um, water circulating, to keep the core cool. And it melted down and uh, there's all kinds of radioactivity. And there's all kinds of radioactive elements. Iodine's one of the biggies. Uh, but we're not talking about that. There is a lot of, a lot of, um, other radioactivity, we're talking about the naturally occurring radioactivity. All right, so first of all, alpha particles. In case you haven't learned it yet, that's the lower case. Greek letter alpha. I mean, so we might do an A like this. It's almost like that. It kind of comes down like you were starting a mini D and then putting a tail like you were doing an A. And that's probably even worse. So alpha particles are a helium nuclei. Helium nuclei is two protons and Don't say that, I should write it down, shouldn't I? A helium nuclei is two, <sighs> two protons and two neutrons. Now, alpha particles are not very energetic, I mean, as far as radiation goes, as far as um, subatomic particles go, a helium nucleus is enormous. Tiny for us, but enormous for subatomic particles, two protons and two neutrons. Because of that, it can be stopped by a piece of paper. It doesn't take much at all to stop alpha particles. Now, alpha decay, that is when it gives off an alpha particle, reduces an element's atomic number by two and its mass by four. <coughs> it reduces its atomic number by two because there are two protons and uh, two protons in an alpha particle and its mass by four because there are four particles in an alpha particle. So, and um, oh, I should have a periodic table with me right now, and I don't. So if you'll uh, bear with me for just a second.
find a good one online here. All right. So let's say if I can find it. Oh, I've got this uh, periodic table from PubChem, which is uh, some government organization. And it's got everything filled in up to 118. Cool. That's all right. So I believe number 92 uranium is uh, is the highest naturally occurring element, if memory serves, the largest of the naturally occurring elements. So uranium has 92 protons. And there's different isotopes. One of them is 238. So if I take two protons, because remember, we're talking two protons and two neutrons. If I take away two protons, I'll now have 90. And, your, and elements with 90 are not uranium. If I remember the thorium. Yep. But I also have two neutrons I'm taking away, uh, at, and I'm taking two protons, and both of those have the same mass, so I end up with thorium-234. In other words, the atomic number went down by two, just the two protons. The atomic mass went down by four, two protons and two, um, two neutrons. And this process, will continue 92, 90, 78, 76, 74, except for it's not quite that simple for the reasons we'll get to in a minute. And it doesn't keep going forever because once it reaches lead, it's stable for whatever reason. Lead is very, very stable. Uh, it'll continue decaying until it reaches lead, but it's not just minus two, minus two, minus two. For reasons that'll come up in just a minute. Notice that uh, alpha decaying occurs only in large molecules, large nuclei, and why helium? Apparently helium is just very tightly bonded nucleus and it's, it's a favorite. Now, the reason that we don't go down to, down to, down to, down to, down to is because sometimes then we can also have beta decay. And this like capital B with a tail at the bottom is the Greek letter beta. <clears throat> uh, and beta decay is electrons. Uh, pretty high energy electrons, but just electrons can be stopped by lead foil. Um, but here's the funny thing. Beta decay actually increases atomic number by one without changing the mass. And uh, I'll explain to you why that is. Uh, does, what does it say? Is it going to tell us anything about that in the notes? Okay, beta decay results when a neutron decays into a proton, electron, and antineutrino. Neutrinos and antineutrinos are massless particles that travel at the speed of light, kind of like photons. Uh, they've got pretty good evidence that they exist, but the evidence is way over anything that we care about at this point. So basically, when you have um, um, beta decay, you have a neutron 
that changes into a proton, remember neutrons are neutral, protons are plus, and an electron is given off. So minus one plus one would add up to neutral. So let's say we've got our 90 thorium and it gives off one piece of, um, one piece, quote unquote, of beta decay, a beta particle. That actually changes one of the neutrons. Let's say, I, I don't know, this uh, 234. We had thorium 234. So when this happens, one of these neutrons becomes a proton. So now it's 91, 234. But because electrons are nearly massless, it has virtually no noticeable impact on the mass per se. So we changed from thorium, 90, uh, 234, I mean, into protactinium, which is PA90, still at 234. Beta decay is caused by the weak interaction. Okay. <clears throat> Take it for what it's worth. Beta decay is caused by the weak interaction. What's the weak interaction? A force that causes a beta decay. So somewhere along the way here, uh, they're describing what's happening, maybe not really telling why it's happening. Any questions about that? All right, then, <clears throat> gamma rays. This is Greek letter gamma. It kind of looks like when you're um, making a picture and you want it to look like birds are flying. Um, Jana come back in about half an hour. Hmm, this is weird. Uh, let's see. Anyway, except there's a little loop at the end. It's kind of, it's as good as I can do it uh, drawing a gamma. Now, gamma rays are not particles. They're not um, um, helium nuclei. They are not, uh, they are not um, electrons. They are electromagnetic waves. They're very energetic. They can pass through a thick wall of concrete. They're composed of very energetic photon, uh, given off by excited protons in much the same way excited electrons give off light. And they are a byproduct produced in conjunction with alpha and beta decay. They're the ones we're uh, the most worried about in many ways. All right, I don't really need these lessons to go a whole 50 minutes because don't have to take time to get everyone quiet, don't have to take attendance, don't have to put up with whatever kind of interruptions are going on. So we're at 30 minutes and that's the amount of material I wanted to get done. So any questions? You should log in again tomorrow. Um, there will be a quiz tomorrow. You can use your notes. Uh, it will be online. You will find it at the uh, LMS site. Answered online. 
it will be uh, come available sometime between seven and eight tomorrow morning, and it will should be finished by three o'clock in the afternoon. So, no one seems to have any questions. Thank you for your participation, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice day.